my disturbers. It's been a while, but it's that time again. Exam time. Yay. Yes, exam time. I'm right now studying for my exams. Well, not right now, because now I'm making this video, but right now I'm studying for my exams. That will be next week and the week thereafter. And then it's vacation time. I'm looking very forward to it. But in the meanwhile, last week, I was studying in the library of my school with some classmates and some of my classmates thought that I was very good at philosophy. So I, I just could answer some questions about logic thinking and other, other things and one joked, hey, you should make a video about that for your disturbed channel, wouldn't that be hilarious? Well I know it was a joke. But I take those things very seriously. So welcome to Philosophy with the Disturber. Where I will tell you how to get a philosophical brain. Or just how to think like you have to do in philosophy to get to your exam. Hopefully. Don't take any, any of this seriously. But if you do, maybe it helps. I don't know. But Let's talk about how I did get good at philosophical thinking. You know when you, most people, are thinking most philosophical? About most of the going philosophical debates that you have with friends. Everybody has them, above the age of 18 at least. Because when are, are you get, do you get them the most, if you haven't tried it yet? Or getting drunk. So, let's just get drunk. I'm not sponsored by Amigo. It's just nice beer. Yeah. But when you get drunk, you know, like that real drunk. Not as drunk that you can't remember anything, but drunk enough that you go from raw party to philosophical debates, why we are not talking about today. Because then you're gonna talk about something and then half of your friends think this, other half of your friends think that. I have that with my friends about migration problems and all those sort of things that are in politics and also sorts of random what, what is good, what is bad, philosophical thinking. So if you really want to try that, get drunk. Or high, if that's legal in your country. I'm from Netherlands, so for me it's legal, but for most of you there it isn't. So just get drunk and of course don't drink underage, that's bad. I'm 23, I'm allowed in I think all the countries in the world, but if you if you are under the age of consent for alcohol, don't don't listen to me. Go watch something else. Not me. Um I'm a weird guy that's getting drunk on camera. No, not getting drunk. But yeah, that's how you get to philosophical thinking. But, you know, my classmates are not here for that. They want to get my real answers about philosophy and how to do real things that we will be getting on our exam. So, let's get serious for a moment. And teach you some real philosophy. So, today we're gonna talk about two philosophical problems that are easy to but introduce you to philosophical thinking and I know at least one of these problems will be on our exam so yeah let's get to it. The first problem is a well-known known problem 
I forgot who made the problem or the thing, but it's a well known, but it's it's fun to use. It begins with four cards, and two of the cards have numbers, and the other cards have something else. Sometimes colors, sometimes words. I've seen one with drinks, and mine is about animals. See one card with 23, one card with the word snake, another with number 66, and a crow. And I have the rule written, if an odd number is shown, a bird is beneath them, or on the other side. The philosophical question is, how do you know if this statement is true? Because you can only see one side. How many cards do you have to turn around to check if this statement is true? Now, I'm gonna give you five seconds. If you need more, just pause the video, because, well, you can do that. So, pause the video, think about it, and if you have a number, it must be between, between 0 or 4. 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4. Not anymore, because then you get another card from I don't know where but yeah pause the video, think about it and then I'll give you the answer you got it? the answer is two cards with two cards you can prove this theory but which two cards? I hope you already tell that because I'm not gonna be again pausing so let's go through them the answer is the first two cards. Now I'm gonna go to the others, other two first because let them know why you don't have to turn them around. The rule is if an odd number is shown, a bird is beneath them. So for 66, it's an even number. So some of you might think, so the cannot be a bird underneath them. But that's not what the rule said. It only says if an odd number is, there has to be a bird underneath them. An even number, nothing is said about it. An even number can have any animal underneath it. It can also be a bird. It says nowhere that it can be a bird. So only says that if it's an odd number, it has to be a bird. But an even number can have anything. So turning around that card is useless. Now, the crow, that's a bird. Some might think, oh, that one has to have an odd number underneath it. But it's not true. Like I just said, an even number can also have a bird underneath it. So this can ha have an, un an odd number or an even number. It, that doesn't matter. So, that one not either. Now, let's go to the other two, the right answers. 23 is an odd number, and as things suggest, 23 has to have a bird under it. If this card doesn't have a bird under it, this theory is disproven and isn't true. So you have to check this one. But you also have to check out the snake. Why? I think. Because uh, any number cannot know. Uh, is it, there can be an odd number underneath this one. A bird can have any number. But a snake, or any other creature that's not a bird, can only have even numbers underneath it. So you have to check if this is an even number. These two can have anything underneath them. These two have the specific ones that's underneath them. And that's, that's why these two are the answer. This one has to have an even number underneath it. This one has to have a bird underneath it. And that's the answer to problem number one. So yeah, I hope that makes sense to you. Maybe it even helped you understand this more. So yeah, let's go to number two. I call this a pottery exercise. You know, like baking a pot on a turning table with, from clay. You know what I mean. Now, pottery exercise is something they quite, do quite a lot in philosophy. And it goes like this. You take a statement. I've written here, 
going to your lessons makes you wiser. That is a thing that many people say very much. And that's why we all need to go to our lessons. But that statement, we're gonna break it down. Because if you take the statement as it stands here, what does this mean? It means if you go to your lessons, you get wiser automatically. And that's not true. That's simply not true. You don't go to your lessons and I'm wiser now. No, that doesn't happen. So you're gonna break it down and kind of write down the exceptions on that rule. Like, if you don't pay attention in lessons, you don't get any wiser because you're not paying attention to what's given, so yeah, you're just sitting there. I've had that multiple times. I've fallen asleep in, by, in lessons. It's, it's no worries, but it happens to everyone. But the, that's an exception to the rule. I didn't get wiser in those lessons. I got wiser when I studied those lessons at home. It only got me extra work. Well, not very smart of me, but no, that's, that's an exception on the rule. So, to make a true statement, because that's what we try to do with the pottery exercise, we try to make it watertight, you know, like a piece of pottery, we get those exceptions out of there. Get all the plot holes and all the things that don't fit right out of there. So, I made paying attention while going to your lessons makes you wiser. Now that's a much more true statement. Probably isn't the correct statement still, because there are many exceptions still on this one. But that's the pottery exercise. You have to make a new statement, which I just did, and then go find exceptions of that one. And then make a new statement out of it. And then make exceptions again, and make a new statement out of it. And again, and again, and again, till you have a statement that has no exceptions. Very rare that that eventually happens, but in our exams we only have to have to do this once or twice just to let them see you can do this. So classmates, this is the one that's going to be on the exam. Yes, the pathway exercise. That's going to be on the exam. So yeah, you do it again and again. Just make a statement more true. That's. What I wish a lot more politicians and other people in the media would do, because that's a thing that they don't really know, do they? But yeah, those were two, two exercises. One is for sure going on the exam, the other maybe, and others it's just more logic thinking that you need to learn to understand philosophy. So yeah, uh, I hope this helped you, classmates, and maybe other people on the internet that found this video. I hope it helped you. I just made this as a joke, but I thought, well, let's get serious and actually try to teach you something. If you want more of this, exercises in philosophy, or maybe something others, maybe I, I can teach other things. Let's get this a whole new section on my channel, who knows. Uh, write down in the comments and like, subscribe and do all that other crazy wacky shit. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, in a few weeks it's vacation and then I finally can make much bigger videos. Starting with reviews again. Yes. So till next time my disturbers. Uh, good that I had all these books left. Uh, uh, uh.